Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Thai League Central podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing Thailand's under-23 national team as they prepare for AFC Championship qualifiers in Mongolia. I'm joined by two guests today. One is a regular member of the Thai League Central crew, Ob Tactic Times. How are you doing today, sir? Uh, great. The weather is nice. It's a bit cooler now in, in, in Thailand, so yeah, all smiles and really excited for what the national team is up to and the league as well. It's a bit cooler in the UK as well, but that's a bad thing as far as I'm concerned. It's also a bit cooler in Mongolia, minus two degrees the players will be playing in. That'll be a big factor, I think. We'll discuss that in a bit. Um, the Thai media has made a lot about that already. So we'll discuss that in the, in the episode proper. We're also joined by Grant, who is an expert on Thai youth football and a good friend of the show as well. Grant, how are you doing today? Pretty good after being described as an expert. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, it, it's hard to find somebody who knows more about Thai youth football than you. So we're happy you're here to join us and talk about the squad and the upcoming games. So on the screen now, we have the full 27-man list for the, the squad for the upcoming games. And this is the first time that the U23 team is playing any fixtures since the 2020 AFC Asian Cup at the beginning of last year, which is the tournament in Thailand. It's also the first time that the 1999 generation is representing Thailand at this level. Uh, so looking at the current squad on the screen, three of these players were in the U23 squad for the tournament in Thailand, and five of them were in the U19 AFC Asian Cup in 2018, which was the last time the 1999 generation had a competitive tournament. Uh, of course, in that tournament, Thailand made it to the quarterfinals where they lost to Qatar. So this year group, this generation, was actually one game away from qualifying for the U20 World Cup. Uh, so it is quite a strong generation. But for whatever reason, I feel it hasn't been uh, discussed or, or covered as extensively as the one before it, possibly because COVID sort of derailed international football for quite a while. So I'll, I'll go to Grant with the first question. How do you compare the, the 99 group that we see now to the 97 group uh, that represented Thailand at the last time? I, I think it's difficult to compare them because <clears throat> this squad here, it, it represents the players that are available and the players mm -hmm. that were released. Yeah. Whereas the, the squad before that did so well, um, that was during an international window the selectors had the full range of players available to them. So I think this squad is good. It's decent. There's a lot of players that I'm looking forward to seeing, but it's not the best version of the 99 group that could be available. Yeah. Um, you know, Ekinitz, uh, Supernat, you know, those, those star attractions like that, they're not going to be released by their clubs. And I think there's at least a, a dozen or more other players who would have gotten into this squad as well who uh, the clubs are just not willing to release them right now because they're going to miss out on three fixtures in the meantime. Yeah, but I think considering the limitations sort of what we, they've been able to put together is actually quite a decent team. So, Ab, are you satisfied with the squad they were able to put together? With, with, with the Thai, Thai, Thai League going on, I think this is the best we have. It, it, I think I still think it's, it's a, store, like a strong squad. You know, lots of talented players in here and I I tend to not place too much too much expectation when it comes to youth tournament. So, you know, let's see let's see how the boys do. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, you might not, but Thai media and Thai oh, fans yeah, yeah. have very high expectations uh, at at pretty much every level for Thailand, <laughs> and uh, the expectations will fall on the new manager. Uh, who is not a new manager. He is Wara Wutsi Maka, who has been around before. He led Thailand U23 to the uh, Asian Games uh, difficulty in, in 2018 when they failed to get out of the group stage. He'll also be joined by Choktawi Pramrut, who was previously an assistant coach at the U23 and the, and the senior national team and was the head coach at Port FC most recently. Uh, so what do we think of the coaches? I'll, I'll go to Grant with this one. What do we think of these two coaches? Well, they, they certainly got experience at this level. Um, Coach Chuck, as long as I've been following 
Thai football. I think he was there with Zico kind of right at the start when I got into the game around about mm-hmm. 2014. So yeah. he's he's quite a good appointment, I feel. He's got a lot of experience. We know Warrawa has, has been here before. Um, my only concern is that for me, the U23 squad is a stepping stone to the, the full national team. Um, and as you kind of just mentioned, youth football, to me, it should be about um, performances rather than results. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel maybe that with, with having somebody like Warrawit, I don't think the synergy is there between the football he's going to play and how Manel Polkin is going to play. So I, I, I don't want to criticise because it's been a bit of a rush and they had to make appointments and they had to get things sorted. Um, yeah. But I, I would have preferred it was somebody who's a little bit similar to Mano, maybe even one of Mano's crew or somebody that he'd have had the chance to appoint. But I do appreciate that it's, um, it's been a bit of a rush to get new coaches in place. Yeah, I think a big thing we were talking about, uh, both with this team and the senior team, was that we need to get somebody who can who can step in and, and, and immediately be familiar with the surroundings, you know, because we have no time. I think there are five days of training with this squad in Mongolia and then immediately is the game. So, yeah, there's not much time to sort of implement your, your philosophy on this team. And I'll go to Ab if, if my opinion on this is correct. But I think, like, it's right now uh, the feeling I get from, from this tournament and possibly even the AFF Cup is, like, the Thai FA has sort of said, let's not think about the long term for a little bit. Let's think about what's in front of us right now and make sure we don't mess up because we've messed up a lot in, in international football earlier this year um, and we need to avoid that again. So let's just not mess up. And I think that that's the sort of the, the squad they've picked, the manager they've picked, all is geared towards not messing up. Uh, do you agree with that? Absolutely. It's... it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> Look, it, it's about you know, it's about short term performances for for from the F, FAA's perspective, and I think uh, I think it's 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 tough for them you know to find someone who 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 would come in and, and actually take charge of the squad and and have the knowledge to pull that off. So you know it's. It's reasonable. You you can understand why they went with someone with experience in in what I would and talk to me, even though the two guys you know, play or coach a complete opposite um, brand of football. But again, I think like Grant said, it's the experience and, and it's the the knowledge of the talent pool that that will be beneficial in 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 a, in a short term project like this. Yeah, and are you? okay with it being a short-term project or, or is that a is that a problem look as someone who's obsessed with tactics like me i prefer long-term thinking and, and, and a, a clear-cut philosophy to stick to but it was it, it is what it is and yeah i'm fully behind who, whoever is in charge mm-hmm. yeah i think a pretty fair assessment of that uh, we'll go straight into talking about the squad, uh, about notable inclusions and absences. And I think we'll start with three big notable inclusions because prior to their announcement, I think that a lot of us were getting a bit worried about the squad because we were told that a lot of players of regulars won't be released because they're playing club football and the clubs won't release them. And then the news dropped that we're going to get three players uh, who are currently playing in Europe to come and join the squad. And that was, I mean... That was Jonathan Kemdi uh, from Oden Sport Club in Belgium. That was uh, Ben Davis from Oxford United and Tanawat Singh Chitawan from Leicester City. Uh, of course, Tanawat uh, has played for the senior team already. He played for the senior team in World Cup qualifying. Ben Davis played for the U23 team at their last tournament. And this is the first time uh, that Jonathan Kemdi is joining a Thailand team. So about the three of them, what, what do they bring uh, from, from what you can see? What do they bring? And how, how, how significant will their inclusion be? I'll go to Grant first on this. I think one of the things they bring is a sense of intrigue. <clears throat> Previously, when I've watched um, youth football, it's been very much the boys that are based here in Thailand. Mm-hmm. And this is the first time where there's a few unknown quantities. 
So for me as a fan, I'm really looking forward to seeing these boys. We know a little bit about Tanawat already. We saw glimpses of Ben Davis two years ago and probably enough that we want to see a little bit more. Um, but in terms of Kem D and um, I, I think there's a few other guys that may be on the peripheral, a few other uh, dual national players that might also get called up. I think it, it justifies these tournaments um, having those players because if it's just the guys from Thailand and it, it doesn't go well, then we're going to say, what have we learned? But if we're having these guys and bringing them in, you know, we, we only get certain opportunities throughout the year to be able to do that. Um, yeah. So I think it does it does validate the tournament having those guys in there. And I, I think it does bring a sense of excitement for the fans as well, especially guys like Tenawat and, and Ben Davis, who are, you know, kicking ass on the European front and uh, flying the flag out there as well. Yeah, uh, and they're kind of like new signings. You, you don't get international football. When you, when you do get a feeling like that, it's pretty cool. Are we looking forward to seeing them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Tadawat really impressed when he, when he popped up and, and, and debuted for the, for the senior team. And he's been named the captain of the under-23s in, for this tournament. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that's too quick. Yeah. Or whether he's like the, 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 the go-to guy to be captain, but you know, it shows how much and like how highly rated he is among the, the national team setup. And yeah. Ben Davis as well, like like Grant said, you know, he's shown enough for us to want to see more of him. And it'll be interesting how 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 they fit in in whatever system course what I would you know, decided to play in. And it's it's it, we'll, we'll go into it later, but it's it's an interesting squad of players, you know. So many questions in, in, in terms of formation and selection. Another factor that's been discussed a lot, whether it's fair or not, is the temperature in Mongolia, which is minus two. And it's absolutely freezing over there. And there's already discussion about will the Thai players be able to adapt to the weather? Uh, will that be a big factor in our play? Um so the question is, one, do you think it will be a factor? Or two, will having European-based players help with that situation? I'll go to Grant for us on that. I think this is a conversation that comes up with the Asian Champions League as well. Every yeah. time our teams have got to go to Japan or certain parts of China and you see them pictured with their woolly hats on and the rear muffs and the, the great big duffel coats. Yeah. To be honest, I've never really noticed it. It's a big talk before the match and it's yeah. a bit of fun to see these players that are normally walking around in sandals and shorts and T-shirt having to wrap up. But I've never actually really noticed it impact on the quality when, yeah. you know, the, the Bury Rams and, uh, and other teams that have had to go out on there and compete, they've still done a decent job out there. And I've never once heard anybody attribute it to the weather if they didn't quite perform. Um, so, no, I, I don't think it, it will have um, too much of a, an impact. What, what was your second question, sorry? Well, the, if, if it has an impact, would having the European-based players help? But if it's not going to have an impact, I think the answer is, well, it doesn't make a difference. Right, yeah, I'm sceptical, but maybe they can bring a, a little bit of insight, especially with Tanawat being the captain. Um, yeah. You know, I'm sure in Leicester, the, the weather's not particularly glorious. You can, <laughs> you, you can verify that. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, you know, if he's leading by example, then that's going to help as well. Yeah. Are any thoughts on it? <laughs> I think it's just the Thai press, you know, t- taking the their opportunity to, to to print out or, or, or shall I say post some easy news and you know it's, yeah. it's just cheap shot. Yeah. Or they just need cynical. they need to make the numbers, you know. They yeah. need to make the numbers. And why not talk about whether it's either too cold or too hot, too dry or too wet. You know, it's <laughs> it's the same thing <laughs> wherever we go. Or if you're cynical, it it that's prepare the scapegoat ahead of time. You never know. So moving on from those three players now, we'll talk a bit about the Mung Tong players that are in the squad. There's, there's three of them, two out on loan, one, one uh, with the first team. And the one with the first team is, is Korowe Tasa, who has been playing pretty regularly as a sort of super sub for Mario Jurovsky's team so far. Uh, Grant, are you surprised they released him? And, and as one of the vice captains of the team, how do you think he's going to do in this tournament? Yeah, I, I didn't think they would release him, to be quite honest. Um, 
he offers something a little bit different. Um, so yeah, I, I'm surprised, but I I do kind of think that having Madame Pang there and the fact that she released Chiturapat, who's a player mm-hmm. that's been playing regularly for them, I think yeah. that's worked in our favour. So that when they give Mang Tang a call and she can say, well, you know, we've done our bit, we yeah. really need this player, and it, maybe that's just helped. Um, there's maybe a couple of others from the the Bury Rams and Chombries and Mang Tongs that they wanted. Um, but, you know, she could get one more player than the, the previous management was able to get, then it kind of justifies her appointment. Um, but, yeah, in terms of Gorowin, I'm really looking forward to seeing him play. Mm-hmm. I saw an interview with him and uh, he was asked about where's your preferred position because we've seen him as a number 10. We see him often on the left wing. And he said, for me, I, I prefer to be down the middle. Um, yeah. he's, not, he's not a traditional target man, although he's, he's quite a, a decent height. Um, but he does prefer being that central striker. Um, and I think whatever setup they go with, he's going to be that main striker. So mm. I'm looking forward to seeing him in that, um, given that opportunity. And I've also got fresh in my mind that the last U23 tournament, Sorowit Pantong had a great tournament. We were set to loan him out to Tero. But he was that good that Gamma ended up recalling him, put him in the first team. So as well as Gorowit, there's a load of other boys that have got a huge opportunity to get themselves in the spotlight and, um, you know, maybe use that to get themselves a first team spot at their current clubs as well. Are you thinking about anybody in, in particular on, on that comment? Well, I think, you know, Gorowit, he is kind of on the cusp. I mentioned Juturapat. There's a lot of competition at part for the left-back spot. Um, but with... Kevin been out for so long. Um, you know, he's kind of been put in roller there, but if he steps up and he delivers in this tournament, then that's going to convince them that they should maybe make him the first choice guy there too. Mm-hmm. And maybe looking at um, Antonio at, at Chambery. At yeah. the moment, he seems to have a, a couple of guys in front of him, but this is going to be the first real glimpse we're going to have at him. So again, if he can do really well, he's going to nudge in front of a few others and get a bit more playing time there too. Yeah, um, we'll we'll stick on we'll stick on Antonio because I know you want to talk a little bit about him. We'll go. I'll continue with Grant on Antonio, and then I'll go to Ab on Antonio as well. Uh, so yeah, what do you? Th- I mean, you you've discussed him before. What do you think of his abilities and and what kind of player is he? Well, yeah, kind of, I, I mentioned that he's a center. <laughs> yeah, I was actually aware of him um, when he was in Sweden. Um, I'm probably going to butcher the team name. Is it Jurgarden? G- is that how you, pr- you pronounce yeah, I it? Would, G- I would assume. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll Something like yeah. that. <laughs> and so, yeah, he, I do know that the, the youth academy guy there didn't want him to leave. He's not come over to Thailand because he's struggling in Sweden. He was mm. a, um, a U18 international for Sweden. He was doing very well, but I guess he saw Thailand as a, a path to first team football a little bit quicker. And he's made quite a brave decision. I know some would condemn him and say you should have stayed in Europe, um, but maybe he's looking at another three or four years before he can break into that team out here. Um, but I fully anticipate that this year he's going to get a chance at some point for Chambery. Um, I've only seen snippets of videos of what he can do, but he's a very modern centre-back. He's comfortable on the ball, his distribution's good, and he's, he's very comfortable carrying the ball out of defence as well. If there's 10 yards of space in front of him, he's quite happy to drive forward, Mm -hmm. force the opposition, drawing them into him, um, and then releasing the ball as well. And then I think with some of the Thai lads, they struggle a little bit to take that initiative. They're much happier clearing the ball, going long, or passing that book and putting it onto a midfielder. Um, So I'm quietly confident that he's going to have a good tournament. Yeah. So, Ab, I'll, I'll go to you on any of the players mentioned, Gorovic, Tatura Pater, or Antonio Sanjarak, any of those three you want to discuss. Go ahead. Like, I, I think Gorovic, I hope Gorovic have, have a big tournament. <laughs> and I think, well, there's no, there's, how do we say it? For, like, correctly, you know, there's not enough space for two young strikers in Mung Thong. I prefer, I, I see Gorovic as a bigger talent and <laughs> With Thailand, sometimes a good tournament with the national team helps highlight your 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 quality. And I, I, the only thing I'm worried about Gorovit is he doesn't get enough game time with Mung Tong, so he doesn't have the, the match fit, fitness to maybe play play at, at his best for 90 minutes. And now he's gonna have to do it as a main man for the national team. 
So maybe Rora Wood might have to rotate. But otherwise, they've got to be a big talent up front. So I'll stick with Ob for the next question. Of course, Ob is a longtime uh, BG fan and, and club employee. Uh, and BG have two uh, sort of support clubs or feeder clubs in Thai League 2, where a lot of their young players are on loan, uh, which are Rajpracha and Chiang Mai FC. And th- there have been two players each of, from each of those clubs in this squad. So we'll start with Rajpracha first, who have supplied uh, Chonapat Buapan, the centre-back, and Getipo Nudom, the goalkeeper. So uh, what do you think of those two players and what do they bring to this squad? Starting with Ketepon Odom, you know, he's someone who's a good shot stopper. He's like the, he, obviously, he's a, the number one starting keeper for Rush Bashai T2 in the second tier of Thai football. But with the national team, I don't think he's going to start. I think Ketesak Chowdon from Udon Tani, it's, you no, know, he's going to be the, the number one. Still, regardless, you know, Ketesak, no, mm-hmm. Ketepon Odom, you know, uh, a decent talent. But someone who, who really stood out from Russia Russia is Chonapat Buapan. So he's an, he he played for the national team since the, the other nine other nineties as well. He's a really tall lad and even though he's so young and he just started his career at senior level, he shows no sign of nervousness. You know, he's he's a brave kid and he's already a key member of the Rush Masha team. And he he he's not afraid to to do the the the, the hard stuff in defending and I think he he has a big future ahead of him if he keeps on working hard and, and maybe make a good impress on, on in this tournament. Maybe his profile will rise and more more attention will turn to him. Yeah of course he's only 17 years old, born in 2004 uh, and to be in the U23 squad is quite a significant deal. Uh, for Chonapat, but yeah, he's been starting in T2, so do you think he has a chance of, of, of getting game time at this squad? Look, competition is, is, is stiff. You know, it's, you've got guys like Jonathan Kembe who, who, who flew all the way from, from Europe and, and, and then there's lots of, there's lots of competition in defense in this squad, mm-hmm. but then again, when you talk about on when you judge him on form, he he should be starting. You know, maybe I'm biased, but you know, I, he impresses me in 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 T two and as someone who watches him in, in training as well. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll go on to the the Chiang Mai FC players next. Uh, you got Pong Rui Chan Tawong, who's a central midfielder. And uh, Tawan Kospo, who's a, who's a forward. Mm-hmm. Both of them were on loan at Saretsa Osaka in previous years, playing with the U23 team there in J-League 3. They're both born in 2000. Uh, what do you think of their quality, Ob? Paul Rowit is a really exciting talent. You know, he's a box-to-box midfielder with a great left foot. You know, he, he, knows how to, he knows how to shoot from, from, from range. And I think he, his career stagnated a bit when he... Return from his loan spell in Japan, and then mm-hmm. you know he he was behind the pecking order behind Titipan Pongjan, who is Thailand's best box to box midfielder. But again, sources from inside the club all agree that you know he now that he's in Chiang Mai, you know he's he's more hunger, more determined to 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 build his career, and I think that's. That's proven with, with his performance for for you know, for Chiang Mai FC. Similarly, you know the one Kotopo, he was given a, a few chances with the first team towards the end of last season. As BG, you know, already secured the, the title. But the one when you think the one Kotopo, you think Michael Owen. You know, he's he's a quick guy first and a football and a footballer later. You know, yeah. when he he gets the ball, he he he. He sprints with it, and that's good as well because you know he 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 it's he has that sense of unpredictability, but mm-hmm. also he's so easy to predict. You know he you know he's gonna run on the ball, but out of the two, I think Pong Rowit is a bigger talent from from Chiang Mai FC. Yeah, I'll I'll go to Grant with the same question because you've also watched the pair of them quite a bit. Grant, what's your thought on these two players? 
Yeah, I, I'm going to echo what I'll say is with Pongra Witt, he's a, he's a ball magnet. He's demanding the, the ball from the defenders. And he's pretty much that the heartbeat of the Chiang Mai team from what I've seen. Tawan, he's more on the peripheral. Um, he's dangerous when he gets one-on-one, but he's got a bit to learn about engineering those situations and, and getting himself into the right spaces, first of all. Mm. Um, but he's a good option to have in the squad. I'd like to see Prongowitz start. Um, to one, he's going to be a good option for the bench. Um, you've got players like um, Jacket in the squad as well at, at Conken United who offer a similar thing. So you put one of those on each wing, then they can give you a whole different set of problems that you can cause the opposition. But yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think Pongo is a, a big talent and he's one that I'm really expecting to stand out. Yeah, so I assume you'd picture him starting alongside Davis and Tanawan in midfield? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure exactly where, how Tanawa is going to operate. We yeah. saw him play a few times for Thailand and he likes to get deep and take the ball off the defenders, but he doesn't want to stop. He wants to keep going and he, he needs to play with somebody that's going to be attuned to that and who is going to cover for him and give him the freedom to do that. Um, I think he's the most talented player in the squad and we need to let him do his thing. Yeah. Um, exactly how they're going to incorporate Ben Davies into that if three of them play in the middle together, along with somebody like Pongrowit, who wants to get forward too, I don't know. Um, I don't know if they might have to take one of those out, use a little bit of rotation and uh, put one of the other guys in who's going to naturally sit and curb those attacking instincts. Yeah, I don't think we actually have that, you know, a, a natural defensive midfielder. Looking here, you could probably throw in some of the, some of the defensive players there. I'm thinking... Maybe Tirapat, who's at Utia, could, could, could cover in that position. But there's no real natural defensive midfielder. If you had to pick one, I'll ask you both. Who would you pick as like a natural defensive midfielder in this team? Uh, oh, go to- naturally, I'll, I'll go with Efan Dalo from Buriram United. Hmm. His career, he's been stagnated for like maybe a year and a half or so. But look, this is a kid who caught the eye of Akira Nishino with, with the national team as well so yeah. everybody knows he's a big talent but we've not seen enough of him but yeah. looking from judging from what we have he's the only uh you know this midfield destroyer we have in the squad yeah grant what do you think well um sita bunla who's another 17 year old that his his preferred position he sits deep he generally kind of keeps the play flowing, plays it quite simple, but he's, uh, he's another 17-year-old who's a big lad. He's probably six foot. Um, I think maybe he's in the squad just due to the lack of competition for a player who naturally is like an anchorman or a destroyer. So he can play that role, but at 17, it is a big, big ask. Um, and I'm, I think he's more there for the experience but the reason being is that they've they've pushed him along is because we are missing a player like that. But I don't think it would be smart to put him straight into the, the first team. So I would also go with Efandola. We'll move on now to discuss Bangkok United, who are actually the single most represented club in this squad. Uh, they've got four players in the team and all of them are with the, with the Bangkok United first team. But none of them have really gotten much game time at Bangkok United. I'll stick with Grant for this one. What do you think of the four... Uh, Back again, boys, who are, of course, Kritsanapon, Buncheri, Gantapon, Kirileng, Chayaton, Tepsuwanabon, and Nakin, we said Chan. All four of them are with the BU first team, but they haven't exactly been uh, given a lot of first team opportunities. So what do you think of these four? I mean, with Chayaton and Guntapon, we know the talent is there. That's without question. Um, but I'm not sure that they should be picking players based off potential when there's... Clubs like Konken, Chiang Mai, um, Ayuti United, there's a lot of clubs who are putting young players into uh, Thai League 2. And I don't know why these Bangkok United boys aren't there. They should be yeah. playing at that level. They, should, they could well be playing every week. The last time we saw these boys in any competitive action, it was like two years ago. You know, It was pre-COVID and they were playing U19 Youth League football. 
I don't know if they've grown since then. Nakin's the exception. He's already been with Army. He had a great season. He picked up an injury. So the year after, he didn't play as much. But then he got a loan deal to China and started to recover his fitness and got some playing time. So no real worries about him. But I feel like the other three have been called up because we've got an idea of what their level might be. Um, but Bangkok United are willing to release them because they know play they don't play any part in the match day squad. They're they're not utilized there. You know, so I, I worry that they're gonna be also runs and the when they start training, it's gonna be quite evident that these boys don't have that sharpness and they're gonna be a little bit behind the rest of them. Yeah. Ob, any any other thoughts on that? <laughs> I <laughs> look, I, I hope I hope they they define a little bit. guys like Katapon. He could be scoring goals for top, like top half of the table T two club, easy. Mm. And I think after this whole tournament is done, you know, they maybe should you know get up total one and stay boss. You know, send me on loan, find me a team. You know, I, I, but that's what you we know we we know Bangkok have, have good kids. You know, it's just about that convey moving that can convey a build on. And I have to wonder why a club that really prides itself on running well behind the scenes has, has such a big blind spot when it comes to developing young players. Like every other club is doing it. And already, I think Black Oak United have a small number of good players. They don't have to manage a whole squad of 20 like Vuong Tong have to do. And they have to, you know, pretty much take over a club, a club in T2 to send all the young players. But you have a very small number of good players. Like why have they not pushed these guys forward? Like what's been going on with that group? No, without going into like a big long discussion, you know, I think when when guys like uh Chayaton or or Gakapun came up, you know, it, it coincided with Bangkok signing big name players like like Fender and and maybe even Hepati, Koso guy, those guys, you know, it's it's when Bangkok it's in the it's in Mano Poking's like final year or two. Where the club decided, hey, let's invest big. You know, yeah. I, I think that kind of hinders the the youngsters' progress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any any other thoughts on that, Grant? For me, I think there's a previous generation that had the similar problem. So I, you know, um, the some of these boys started getting a bit of game time towards the end of Mano's term at Bangkok United. And then obviously they changed managers to Tochuan. But I look back at the group, um, Wissarud, Natawud, um, Sasalak, uh, Sarayud, who's now at um, SPC. Yeah. Um, there's maybe a... Um, the, the, the right winger, is it ja- Jacket? Yeah. You know, they, they, these boys all came up at the same time, all really talented. They were youth internationals and they didn't make the space for them. And now Wissera, I think he's just turned 25. He's just now, he's a first teamer. And Natawa last year at 24 just became a first teamer. And mm-hmm. I think they just need to reassess how they do things. They need to re-strategize because these boys, these boys are soon going to be coming up to like 22 years of age and they've not got a lot of experiences. Um, so they need to either get them out on loan earlier rather yeah. than fooling themselves that just having them with the first team squad is they're suddenly going to be able to force their way in when you're going out and signing Thai internationals, just like Ob said. I mean, you know, Titi Pan came in this year, just as it looked like Wissarup was getting the, the starring role that he'd long deserved. And yeah. then, you know, he's, he's then playing second fiddle again. Yeah, so... Interesting to see how, if any of those guys are able to start in this in this team. We'll go on now to simply trying to predict the lineup, which might be a bit difficult, but I'll, I'll, I'll you know, try and pick a starting 11. What would you do? How would you line up Thailand, uh, ideally? Of course, there will be a lot of rotation because there are three games in quick succession. But if you had to pick the strongest lineup from this squad, what would you do? And I'll, I'll go to Grant first. Well... Based off this squad, mm-hmm. in which looking at the team, there's 12 defenders. It yeah. doesn't give you a lot of possibilities. I think you've got to play, you know, three centre-backs. And I think that's the way that he's going to line up. Yeah. Um, and it, he's not really left 
that many other options because of that. So I'm going to preempt that and assume he's going for that. I would go for Caddy second goal. He's got a bit of experience at U23 level. He's been in squads before. Um, and he's played for Udon Tani for about two or three seasons now. Yeah. So he, he does bring that experience. If we are going with three centre-backs, I don't know a lot about Jonathan Kemdy, but I'm just going to assume that he's going to work well in a three and have some pretty good ability on the ball. Yeah. Uh, and plus, I want to know about him anyway. I'd also put Antonio in there, who I think is left-footed, um, and I know that he can play a bit. Um, I'd need one more. I, I'd like all the three centre-backs to be able to play a bit, so I, I'd be tempted to go with uh, Tirapat, because I know, again, he's another good footballer, but probably need a right-footed player. Uh, yeah. I don't know, maybe I'd put Tirapat in the middle. That's where he played for a Yutia. He's quite happy to play five yards in front of the defence and take responsibility for keeping the ball moving. And if there's not a natural defensive midfielder, that could work really well. So maybe they'd be my my three centre-backs. Yeah, Alba, I'll go to you on the centre-backs and the goalkeeper. Do you agree with that? Any changes you'd make? Would you play a three at all? No, I'll, I'll play a, a back four. Mm. Four, four, two diamond, but... but, but I. The I I do have similar concept. You know, I want my defenders to, to play as well. But I'll I'll because you know, I think Kim D is gonna start. You know, he didn't flew fly here just to 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 be benched. Yeah. But I as for my starting eleven, I can't pick up players I, I haven't seen. You know, so I'm gonna go with Shona Pat and and Antonio next to each other. Mm. And uh, Pat Satam left back okay. and right back. I'll I'll. I don't know how fit Nakin is. Yeah. So I'll go with some Pankesi, you know, someone who's despite, you know, he, he's like, you know, he's so small, but he's quick as well. I, I, li- I like him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Grant, who would your, I guess, wing backs? Who would your wing backs be? Well, I think obviously Jitter Pat is going to be a yeah. big part of the team. So he goes straight in on the left. Um, and then I, I would also hope that um, Nakin is fit. He, he's the type of player that I think they would need in a wing back system. Somebody that wants to get up and down all game, support the attack, but he's going to run back and get back too. Um, he did start quite a few games for China at the end of last season. He's obviously not played much for Bangkok United this season, but I would hope that he's put his injury problems behind him um, yeah. and could he ease himself gently into the tournament. I I quite like uh, Anya Saka Sukutai. He's a very versatile player. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe maybe they could play maybe 60 minutes, 30 minutes for a couple of games just to get Nakin warmed up. So yeah, they'd be my two wing backs. Yeah, I think Nakin was also in the, the preliminary squad uh, last month with the U23. So maybe... I, I would think that the coach has been working with him pretty closely and, and sort of knows how he how he how his condition is and how he plays. So that could be a good option. We'll go to midfield now. Uh Ob, what's your midfield? You said you're gonna play a diamond midfield. What's your midfield gonna be? Yeah. So like at the base of the diamond, you're doing all the dirty work is Irfan Dalo, you know. Uh yeah. a, a, someone who's so energetic and he reads the game well, you know, he's good at picking up second balls and interception. You know, I I like the look of him. Again, but you know, fitness and match fitness is my concern. Yeah, and I I went for the the diamond because I think you know we have lots of good central midfielders and our best players are central midfielders. So on the the left and right side of my diamond is Kung Rawit and and Tanawat. You know, we have to give these two the freedom to 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 move around and with the diamond shape, I think you know we could fit them in. Yeah, and at the team of the diamond in the number ten position, I think I'm gonna go with Ben Davis. You know, Ben, like what I like about Ben Davis, Ben Davis is when he when he gets the ball, like on like under his feet, he slows the game down. He just slows the game down, and 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 he takes his time. He looks for a pass, and and I I I kind of like that in the number ten because you know, it draws the defender onto him and opens up space for others who runs runs into. And when you have guys like Punga Whip and Tanawat who runs into space as well, I think you know, it could be a good combination. Yeah. Um, Grant, how would your midfield line up? How many are in there and how would you set them up? Who would they be? Yeah, pretty similar. Um, I, I'd have Irfan, 
in there as kind of a deep lying playmaker, somebody who's going to sit so the other ones can attack. Um, and then next to him, I'd have Tanawa. So I'm going to have a three in the middle because I've got a wing back system. So yeah, Tanawa, he's the captain. Obviously, he's going to play. But I'd give him a lot of freedom, make sure he's got guys with him who will sit when needs be. He, yeah. he seemed to want, when he was in the Thailand team, somebody who would run off of him from midfield. So for that reason, I'm going to go with Pongrawit as well. So Tanawat's going to see a lot of the ball and Pongrawit's going to have the freedom that he can get ahead of him um, and run from midfield. So that would mean that Ben Davis actually initially misses out mm. on my first 11. Okay. Right. And to the forward line now, Grant, what's your, I mean, you have two, two players up top. So who are they going to be? Yeah, I mean, Gorowit, we've already talked about, he'd be my number nine. Um, I've been quite impressed with uh, Jackie Palapon as well at Conquen mm. United. Yeah. So Moncton, we played them not too long ago and he was on the left wing that day. Very direct, pacey kind of player. He reminded me a bit of Bordin. Um, you know what he's going to do. He's going to get his head down. He's got to run with it. But he's doing a good job in T1. So on that alone... I think that warrants a place um, in the first 11. So I'd have him kind of running off uh, Gorowit, um, maybe playing a little bit wider and um, trying to make a bit of space for some of the midfielders to, to push on and, and join the attack as well. Yeah. Ob, who's your forward too? So I will, I will go with Gorowit Tassa for sure. You know, he's quick you know, and he could come out, pick up the ball in wide position and well as well. So that's good. I like that. And Gandapon, someone yeah. who who like to ask for the ball you know, on, to his feet more. Like he's a bit calmer and, and, and takes his time in possession. You know? So that that's good. A good combination. But I would, I would like to add a, a, a bit about Jackie so from Grant because I was a bit surprised when he got the call up. Not because he's a bad player, but be, because I didn't know he was so young. When, when I watched him, I was like, oh, this guy is quite good. And then that's it. You know, and he's quite a big, big boy as well. So he's yeah. quite physical as well for, for a quick player. So I was surprised to, to, to find out he, he he's eligible for this squad. And maybe if, if Katapon is not match fit, you know, bring, I, I don't mind bringing guys like Jackie on. Uh, my fourth choice, you know, like I would, I would avoid starting guys, you know, the, the, the Tirasak, but I think I, don't know enough of him, but he's still young, and I, I I see him his inclusion as someone who's more here for the experience and maybe uh, mm. extra time fifth striker when we're chasing a goal sort of player. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it for the lineups. Any closing thoughts on this team, this squad, the upcoming games? Ob. Ah. Uh, I think it's not a it's not our preferred squad, that, like obviously, but I think there's quality in in the in the side, yeah. and I trust the experience of the management, and I think we could have a, a good tournament. You know, just go in there with a positive mindset. You know, be zen, be one with 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 the with the beautiful game, man. <laughs> Let's hope we do well in Mongolia. Uh, Grant, you have any any more specific comments than be one with the beautiful game? Anything more concrete than that? <laughs> Um, yeah, similar tone that there's a good opportunity for these boys. Um, not all of them are going to make it to the Thai national team, but they've all got long careers ahead of them and yeah. this can really put themselves on the map. So I just hope they uh, seize the ball by the horns and uh, yeah, give it their best. And I think looking at the three teams that they're playing in these qualifiers, we've got a good chance, um, even if it's a slightly depleted squad. I think there's still a good chance to get some good results. That's it for our preview of the Thailand U23 national team heading over to Mongolia to play qualifiers for the AFC Asian Cup. Good luck to Thailand. And thank you, everybody, as always, for listening to the Thai League Central podcast. You can find us on our website at thaileaguecentral.com. Find us on Twitter, on Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you, Aub and Grant, for joining me today. I hope to see you all later. Bye.